Hello. Welcome to the show with everything you could ever want to make right, right at your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Naomi. And I'm Tim. And here's what's coming up on today's show. Discover how some old magazines and bits of card can be transformed into fingertips glam cards. Find out if Tim can beat the clock in today's One Minute Make. And in Food Fingertips, we show you how to make the ultimate Egyptian snack, a yummy mummy that's dead nice. And for details of lots of great fingertips makes, you can check out the website. Address at the end of the show. But first, the Fingertips illuminated door sign. It looks great, it stops you being disturbed, and you'll be the envy of all your mates. Just going to get Tim. Oh, lights on. Keep out. Hey, Tim, what are you doing? Tim! Tim, come on, it's me. Don't you know what that means? No entry. It's all lit up. It means I don't want to be disturbed. Leave me alone. OK. Only joking. That's great, though, isn't it? An illuminated door sign to hang on your bedroom door. Yeah, what, so unwanted people can't come in? Oh, but your real friends can. Oh, thanks. Oh. And we give the illuminated door sign a fingertips difficulty rating of... four. Can be a bit fiddly at times, but it's well worth the effort. To make an illuminated sign, you need some illuminations. So get yourself some of these small fairy lights. The ones with the little battery packs are best. Now, take a cereal box and tape all the flaps shut. You need to cut it in half lengthways around the middle, like this, to get two pieces. Take one of the pieces and cut a small rectangle of card from the top corner on one of the edges. And move this rectangle about three centimetres down into the box. This is going to form a shelf for your battery pack. Just tape it securely into position. And when you've done that, you need to paint the outside of the box any colour you like. We've gone for a nice bright blue. And then you need a design to go on your illuminated sign. The best way to do this is to get a piece of paper the same size as your box and roughly draw a sketch of your idea onto it. This is going to be a fingertips no entry sign. So also don't forget to mark the position of where you want your light to poke through. Once you've drawn your basic design, you can paint it directly onto your box. Or how about cutting out all the various component shapes from fun foam or even material? It's completely up to you. We've gone for some fun foam. So I'm just going to stick the last few bits into position. Square of yellow. And now this rather nice big red circle as well. Now you need to take a sharp pencil to make some holes in the front of your design, which will allow the fairy lights to poke through. Now, it's a good idea to put some sticky tack underneath your design just to protect the surface you're working on. So just poke it through, and there you have your first hole. When all the holes have been made, carefully tape your battery pack onto the shelf at the back, and then push the lights through each individual hole. Take care doing this. Right, all done. So finally get the other half of your cereal box, hold it to the back of your sign, tape the two together so your box is whole again. All you need to do now is attach it to your bedroom door. And of course, there are lots of different designs you can do. Just look at these. If you fancy yourself as a bit of a celebrity, why not make a green shining star to go on your door? Or what about this scary no entry sign in grey, black and white? And just check out that eerie skull and crossbones. Brilliant! So why not light up your life with a fingertips illuminated door sign? He's so bright. To make a fingertips illuminated door sign, cut a cereal box that's had all its flaps taped closed in half. Then take a portion of the box and make a card shelf in one corner for your battery pack. Now paint the outside of the box any colour you like. Next, draw a rough sketch of your sign and don't forget to mark the position of where you want your lights to be. Now cut out the elements from foam, card or even material. Glue the design in position, then carefully push little holes through the box where you want your lights to poke through. Now tape your battery pack to the shelf and carefully pop the lights through each individual hole. Finally, tape the other part of the box back in place. Now just position your sign on your door.
This is Makeover Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something by recycling stuff that you probably find around your home. So what about this lot? A load of animal cutouts from old magazines, some googly eyes, scraps of ribbon, jewels and pink card. Not that inspiring, but with a bit of fingertips know-how, we're going to show you how to transform these old things into this, a glitzy fingertips glam card, ideal for those special occasions. They look pricey, but they cost practically nothing to make. And we give the glam cards a fingertips difficulty rating of one. Nice and simple, so why not get glitzy and get gluing? Take an A4 piece of bright colour card and fold it in half to create your card shape. Next, cut out a cute pet or animal from an old calendar or magazine. This cat's great and we've even given it this scalloped edge. Next, glue your animal onto the front of your card, like so. Then add a couple of googly eyes on top of the real eyes. So, if you're making a card for a boy, stop there. However, if you're sending it to a girl, glam it up even more with these things. Stick on jewels. Just add them wherever you like. I think a pretty pendant necklace would look good. And what about adding on this old bow I found? And when you're finished, it should look something like this. You can see we've added a border and written happy birthday on the front using 3D paint. And you can use this technique to make all sorts of fabulous cards. How about cutting the coloured card to a more fitting shape like we've done with this one? Or check out the snail. I think that is the perfect use for those googly eyes. You've got to admit, they're better than anything you can buy in card shops. So why not recycle some out-of-date magazines and turn them into some fabulous, up-to-date fingertips glam cards? Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends from around the house. Today, it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all you're going to need. Oh, a nice little selection of things there. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is, so see if you can guess as we go along. Are you ready? I think so, and I think I'm going to have a right ball with this oh, make. sounds like a clue. It is. Uh, are you ready for me to spoon-feed you the instructions? Go on, then. Three, two, one. Take it away. OK, you need a big rectangle of card like this and a small square of card as well Five as a wooden already. skewer. Now, I'm going to get some sticky tape and just position the skewer on my square of card like that. Okay. Now, you need a strip... 15 seconds have gone. ..of card. It can be any colour, but we're using black. And using some sticky tape, I'm just going to form it into a loop like this. How am I doing for time? You're coming up to half a minute. 25 Ooh. seconds have gone. With more sticky tape, you then fix the loop onto the square. That's half a minute left. In place like that. And now, using some sticky tack, I'm going to place that at the one end of the rectangle of card and then attach the whole thing. 20 in seconds to go, Tim. Like this. And now I need to take my spoon and. Stop the clock. Oh, 47 seconds. Nice work. What is it? Well, I'll tell you what, I need to add a few finishing touches, actually, with my pen. Uh, one. Line. Another line. Three. Hmm. Four. <laughs> and five. And now I'm just going to quickly put on some numbers as well. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. And well, forty. And um... now... You're pretty much ready to play. Looks like basketball for ants. Do you know what? You're not far <laughs> off. Uh, it is basketball, but it's not any old sort of basketball. It's fingertips spoon basketball. What? Fingertips spoon basketball, of oh, course. Oh, I've heard it all now. All right, you've got the basket, <laughs> granted. Mm -hmm. Where's the ball? Ah, well, that's where this square of tin foil comes in. All you've got to do oh, that was full. is scramble that up into a neat little ball, he says. <laughs> <laughs> like this. That's all right. And then you've got to check that it fits through your net, like that. Perfect. Now you simply place it on the end of your spoon, and you can put the spoon on the on the court. And of course, the further back you go, the more points you get. So 10, 20, 30, or 40 I'm going to go for from here. Ready? Whoa. One, two, three, and fire. Oh, ah, yes. straight in. Well done. Fantastic. Can I have a go? I take back everything I said. It looks quite good. Yeah, go for it. Take it away. Right. But I won't be as good as you. There you <laughs> go. Oh, that was pretty close. Can I use some of these? Yeah, some here. Oh, oh, a bit hard that time. Hard. Third time lucky. Oh, yes! Well done, <laughs> you.
There you go. And of course, if you've got more than a minute, then you can get really elaborate with your designs and do some a bit more like these. They're really great. Uh, on this one, we've gone for a really realistic net effect, just using some pen. And we've put some felt on the court to make it nice and soft. Or what about this girly one that I think you'll like, Naomi? I love that. We've got some fake fur around the outside and some glitter on the court. And we've even gone for this jeweled spoon. Ooh la la. How about that? And of course you can personalise the backboards in any way you like. So why not pick up a stopwatch and some odds and ends from around the house and see if you can net a game of fingertips spoon basketball. In under a minute. What are you doing? Preparing myself. What? You know, setting the scene. Oh, right. Because today we're going to be showing you how to make some ancient Egyptian food. Ah, I think I know what you're saying. You mean something for mummy. Exactly. You mean this something for mummy. Yes, admittedly, it may look a little bit French. A plain old French baguette, monsieur. But all its ancient Egyptian secrets will be revealed. This is a bread sarcophagus. No, really. And inside is an edible mummy. Oh, well, this is the part of the show where we have some fingertips fun with food, and I'm going to have some fun making that. And we give this ancient Egyptian edible mummies tomb a fingertips difficulty rating of... just one easy tomb make. To get going, all you need is a short baguette, a carrot, some lettuce, chutney, relish or salsa, a boiled egg, strips of ham or cheese, and some pepper. Start by washing your fingertips. Then cut your baguette in half lengthways down the middle like this. It's a good idea to ask an adult to do this for you. Now you need to scoop out all the bread from the inside. You need to do this from the base and also the lid. Keep going until it looks like this. Your bread tomb. And now it's time for the mummy. Take some lettuce leaves and lay these into the bottom of your baguette like this, all the way along. And now you need some relish, salsa or chutney. And just spread this on top of the lettuce leaves. That looks really yummy. The redder the better. When that's done, boil an egg, or get someone else to do it, let it cool and peel it. Now this is going to be your mummy's egg head, <laughs> so give it a little face, a piece of pepper for a mouth and two sultana eyes. Then lay this head at the top of the tomb on top of the relish. Next you need a body, what better thing to use than a peeled carrot, so cut it to the right size that you need, but don't put that in yet. Now that you have a body, you need some bandages to wrap it in. And for these, you can use whatever tickles your taste buds. But you might like to try some of these. Cheese slices, which I've cut into little thin strips, or alternatively, some wafer-thin ham. Simply place them on top of your baguette in this kind of crisscross pattern. And then you need to pop your carrot body on top. And then starting from the bottom, from alternate sides, just wrap the cheese slices around the body, like this. When the mummification is complete, you should have this. And you can use other food details if you like. This one's got cherry tomato feet and a pepper headdress. Oh, very Egyptian. Now you just need to seal your tomb and the fate of your mummy is complete. Yeah, too right. It's going to be eaten. And the verdict? Oh, oh dead nice. That's it for today. Don't forget to check out the Fingertips website. The address is on the screen right now. And we'll see you again very soon for more Fingertips. Fingertips. See ya. Bye.